So here it is, this is the EA 24 volt solar inverter. So I'm just doing a test uh, for a few weeks just to see how it compares with my uh, MPP 24 volt solar inverter. So uh, it's pretty much the standard setup on here as it is on the MPP. So we've got the uh, in and out there for the uh, AC inputs and outputs. The battery connects up there and as you can see the PV from the solar panels outside connects up there. So at the moment we've got a reasonably sunny day, uh, end of September time, so we're getting in about 1.16 kilowatts from the 1.36 kilowatt array I've got. Four panels connected in series, so that's a pretty good uh, input rate there. Um, so I've got the, let's have a look around here, so that's obviously the output, I've got a little surge uh, two-way there, which is connected up on there as such and then if I want to charge up from another solar power system I can use that or the mains I don't really use the mains I try and run this completely off grid but it's there if I need it so this is a little Wi-Fi dongle I've got uh, not had one of these before um, so this gives me the opportunity and I'll show you the app shortly uh, just monitoring what's coming in what's going out as well and uh, what the inverters uh, up to so that connects around right up here to the com port on the side and there's a event there as well, I hope that gets in focus, there we go, there's the com port on the side and there's one of the uh, air cooling vents there, we've got two more fans on here. So uh, it's got pretty much the same kind of panel you'd get on the front with your various uh, keys there which you can go through the menu system and just change what's showing on screen as well. Uh, at the moment you can probably hear the fans on here, they're uh, just ticking over nicely with just over a kilowatt still coming in uh, in terms of solar power but one thing I have noticed on this which is far superior than the MPP is the fan control so the fans really do adjust really quickly to the input load so that's whether it's from solar or actually the output load uh, in terms of the AC output and they work really well and they're really responsive and the other thing that it does over the MPP is it doesn't actually run the fans when the loads nice and low so overnight it's actually silent, which is something that I've had to get used to. And as you can hear there, it's just dropped down because the sun's gone in a bit and it's very, very responsive. So the fan control on this is really, really good. So let's have a look around the app. Right in the app now, so as you can see, I've got a couple of things listed. Uh, the top one's actually where I tested this Wi-Fi dongle out on my MPP 24 volt solar inverter as well. And it actually works on that's fine. As long as it can get to a COM port, it seemed to work okay for that setup. So uh, now we're on this one. So the EA Sun 24 volt, I'm gonna click on that. You see there's an alarm on there and I'll explain that in a minute. So this is the primary, uh, page that you get or the the first view that you get which is the energy flow now this isn't instantaneous so this isn't real time it's based on data that's captured via the uh, wi-fi dongle and then sent back up to the cloud so uh, the other thing on here you don't really want to take any notice of is the battery percentage because again you need really a shunt to manage it and actually understand how much uh, charge or how much uh, capacity is actually held in there at any one time so i pretty much ignore that and again, this is a point in time, so it updates uh, regularly, but I'll show you that on some of the other tabs inside. So as you can see at the moment, the battery is full, so it's sitting around the float voltage of uh, 27.2. It's what I've got it set to on this particular setup. And underneath you can see various stats that I'm interested in. So the ch battery charging current and battery discharging current, um, and also the uh, active power. So that's how much is coming out really out of your AC output on this. And if you click on data settings there, you can actually change uh, what you view in there as well. But those are the ones that I've selected for my particular setup. So let's move along. So the next one, which I found particularly useful, especially when I'm out and about, is the chart. So this gives you an idea of how much stuff, in this case, solar power is coming in for me on the power generation. And then you can also click on load power as well, which uh, gives you an overlay of what's going out of your AC output. So again, very useful graph and it goes back, I'll just go back a few days and you can keep scrolling back through and it shows you where you've used your power effectively and on the date. So really handy stuff just for the extra bits that you get on this. So let's move along to analysis. So on here, you can actually break down things a little bit more and I'll show you the selection now. So you've got all these things that you can look at and then graph on that particular day as well. So battery charging current is one that I'm interested in. So there you can select that. 
and then you can go in here as well and then select anything else that's currently on the list. So details, if we go on details now, so this is really the data points throughout the day. So this is all the information that it's really grabbing from the inverter and then just recording. So again, when I mentioned earlier that it's not up to date or completely up to date, it obviously comes in at different times. So if we look at this particular one here, it's the 30th of September and that's coming at 12.53. So this is GMT time. So currently we're still in BST. So you've got an add an hour onto that. So in actual fact, it's currently 1.53 p.m. Uh, in the UK where I am at the moment. But you can just scroll through each of those data points throughout the day and then have a look at the individual or the breakdown data which is obviously what feeds the graph the energy flow tabs etc etc so you can look through there and then you've got the alarms tab now this is empty at the moment I've just cleaned this out um, basically this just tells you once the Wi-Fi dongle has actually stopped communicating so when you switch the inverter off and sometimes I do when the power's low or there's not enough solar coming in I switch it off and then it just creates a little alarm in there but essentially that's really what the app is and I found it very, very useful, but it's not real time. Time to do a quick max load test just to show you what it's like when it's under full load. So I'm just going to use my three kilowatt uh, fast boil kettle here just to give you an idea about the sort of fan kicking in and uh, how it works. So let's kick that off now. I'm hoping you can hear that's now on full, full power. So uh, it's still bringing in the uh, power there, of you, you can see. So just over a kilowatt coming in. And I don't know if you can see the load bar next to the little uh, light bulb there. It's at maximum. So this is on full power at the moment. And the fans themselves, um, I'd say compared to the MPP, I think these are slightly higher pitch, but again, these kind of units do make a fair bit of noise when they're on uh, full power. So that's whether solar's uh, fully charging and you're also running high loads on the AC output. But that's uh, boiling nicely now. So again, I'll try and move the mic closer, but I suppose the sound is in the eye of the beholder as such, or the ear of the beholder so uh, it depends what kind of sound you're used to but again the fan control on this particular unit is excellent even the smallest loads uh, when you plug them in you hear the fans bump up a little bit and then calm back down again so it's really really sensitive to load which is great so you're not having unnecessary noise or fan noise when you uh, don't really need it so that's getting up to the boil now and I think as you can hear it, fans go right back down again and it's continuing to charge the battery, which I think is almost full. So that's a full load test. So the other differences I've noted between this and the MPP 24 volt that I've got is the fact the footprint of this particular unit is a smaller. So I don't know whether that's things have come on in the last few years or not since I got that, but it's actually a smaller box and it's a lighter box as well. So again, depends where you're going to mount this and that. And this again is just in test mode where it is sitting on my uh, shopping cart battery at the moment. And you uh, don't have the ability to use watch power on this, which is what I've used on my MPP. So again, you have to resort to using the uh, uh, buttons as well and uh, looking at the manual. The manual's pretty good as well. It's a standard kind of manual that you get with these solar inverters. But again, for the price point on this, it's just not even worth worrying about. And the fact that you can or you don't have to have the Wi-Fi dongle. But again, I just got it because I haven't got one. And that's tested out and actually proved quite useful for me and my setup. But in general terms, this has turned out to be a really good purchase. And again, at the price point was ridiculous. So uh, I guess only time will tell in terms of longevity. The MPP has been flawless. It's still working. I'm currently using it on one another project while I'm just testing this one out. So again, I'll be out of feedback in future. But again, at this price point, I don't even know why you'd bother going out and buying just the inverter on its own because this has got an MPP built in and also uh, ability to charge from a main. So again, you can pretty much mount this anywhere because it's smaller and lighter than I was expecting, to be fair. And it does the job. So only time will tell on this, but so far, so good. And with increased input capability on the MPP uh, solar input, which is way, way more than the... Uh, um, MPP solar inverter I can't I can't argue with that at the moment so this 
Um, so far, so good. So if you do have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please pop them in the section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Da Vinci.